Hello, welcome back. It's Michael again. Uh, today it's gonna get interesting because today we're gonna start infecting people and see a bit of uh, visual effect and things happening on our screen. Um, so let's jump straight in. So we have our program here where we can initialize the world randomly and have the people run around randomly um, except well they run in random directions but they always run exactly straight so the next thing I want to improve maybe is to make the movement a little bit more random by making them turn every now and then as well let's say with a random chance um, I make them turn a random degree so I can do something like if um, greenfoot dot get random number out of a hundred if I want to a chance in percent and if I say if that um, number is less than 20 I get a 20% chance so this is if I take a random number out of 100 I check whether it's 20 that's a 20% chance that this is true right so in 20% of all cases essentially every 20 steps um, I'm saying um, now turn and I want to turn let's say something between well, I'm making something up here. It's fairly arbitrary. Let's say it was something between 30 degrees left or right. So I just say I turn greenfoot dot and the same again, get random number. And I make that out of 60. So I have a random number out of 60. And then I subtract 30. So if I subtract 30 from a random number out of 60, I get a random number as a result that is between minus 30 and 30. Actually, if you think about it, it's not exactly completely true because the random number is actually between 0 and 59 because the random numbers that we have includes 0 as, zero as a possible result but excludes the limit. So it's actually 0 to 59. So if you think about it carefully, it is actually minus 30 to plus 29. So if I cared about that, I can say, okay, I want to make it out of 61. But in fact, because it's all random anyway, and it's not so accurate, I don't actually care all that much whether you make it 60 or 61. But just to be precise, um, if we want to be precise, that is actually uh, what's happening here. So if we look at this, I'm saying I'm moving forward. If I'm at the edge, I'm turning, but also randomly every now and then I turn by some random angle. Let's see what that looks like. So now you see that the people are walking about but they're not always walking in straight lines. They are changing directions every now and then. Okay, that's fine. So what I want to do next is I want to model my disease. So I have a virus, I want to infect some people. Um, let's say uh, we want to think about how we infect someone. So first let's introduce a um, field, um, a Boolean that say is infected. Um, and at the beginning we make it false. Initially, a person isn't infected. So a person isn't infected initially. Then I make a method that um, they be can become infected. So I say public, because I want to call it at some point, public void infect. Um, so this now will infect this person. And I just say something like, is infected becomes true and now I also want to change the image I say set image and I can have a file name and remember I had three images uh, in my um, in that I had here for uh, my classes I can open up my file system if you look at your greenfoot project on disk you see this is what it looks like you have your project that has um, a name and there is a subfolder called images and here are the images that you have used in your program so they are called normal infected and immune.png so I now want to make it infected so the file name is infected.png so I will use that as the file name infected.png and that's it so I will make them infect so if I do this I can now actually 
right click on a person and I can actually also interactively call any of the public methods and I can see that there are methods inherited from object, inherited from actor, and then there are other methods that I have written in my class myself. So there's the infect method. If I call infect, I can see that this person becomes orange. So I can go around and I can infect individual people here. Um, but of course, I don't want to do that interactively. Ultimately, I want to program that. But first, um, I can now see when, a, when something, you know, when a person runs around, if they touch someone else, they should um, infect the other person. So now I want to program here um, something that says, if I'm touching anyone, infect that other person. And now we're at the point where the act method is actually doing too much. It's doing the movement, now it's doing the infecting. So this is the point where you want to refactor and actually take this out and make this a separate method. So the act method, I want to just say, move and then I make here a private void move method that has all this in here and that just has the the whole movement code in there so this is all the code that has to do with how my person moves about um, so move the person randomly on screen um, so that is my move method. And then I can say here, infect others. Um, and that again will become a method. So I wanted to select this so I can copy it. And then I can just say private void infect others. And I make this method. and infect others now tries to see whether I'm touching anyone else. So I can say something like if is, is touching. So I can check whether I'm touching an object of a given other class. So I say if I'm touching and I say here person.class because the parameter is a class and in fact this method is checking whether I'm touching any object of this class. So if I'm touching this class, um, anyone of this class, then I can say, um, actually no, I, there's a, it's probably better to do that another way. Um, for reason that I explain later, I will do it differently. Um, I will say person um, other is get, get one intersecting object. And there I say person dot class. So I can, I check, I'm tr um, trying to get the person because the is touching tells me that I'm touching that person, but it doesn't give me a reference to that person. So if I say get one intersecting person, I get actually the reference to the person that I'm touching. If I'm trying to compile this, um, I will see that this um, doesn't quite work because it says the actor cannot be converted to person because get one intersecting object gives me an object of class actor. And here I want an object of class person. So what I need to do is I need to do a cast. So if I cast this to person, because I say I want only objects of person class, I can safely cast it to the person that now compiles. And now if I am touching an object, I have the reference to the object here. And if not, then get one intersecting object, object um, the returns null if I'm not intersecting any objects at the moment. So I can now say if other is not equal to null, which means then I am actually touching a person. And I say other dot in fact. So if I say in fact others, um, I should write a comment. I say check whether we are touching another person, if we are in fact them. If we are not touching another person, then other will be null. I will not do this and that's fine. We just don't do anything. If we're not touching anyone, the attempt to infect others will have no effect. Let's compile this. It compiles, so let's try that out. My people can, oh, 
how did the first person get infected? We have, um, suddenly they all got infected. I was surprised by this because I expected, because I have no one initially infected, I, I expected no one to get infected. Um, if I do this, they suddenly all get infected. And that is because here, if I'm infecting others, um, I just said I always infect others even if I'm not infected myself. So of course I should not be able to infect others if I'm not infected my, myself. So I should put that in an if statement. I should say if is infected then I should infect others. Okay. So my act now is I'm moving about and if I'm infected I infect others. Now the act method that reads nicely and here's my movement code, here's my infection code. Um, so let's try that out. If I run this now, no one gets infected. If I pause this, right click on one of them and infect them. So I have now one infected person. If I now run this, everyone that this person touches should become infected as well. And you see how the infection spreads around my population. Okay, I think that's enough for one episode. Um, as always, play around with this, make your own modifications. Um, you learn most by actually trying things out yourself and then come back soon for the next episode. See you soon. Bye-bye.